Hi, welcome to Milwaukee Makerspace. My name's Tom Grolowitz and we love the Mythbusters. But unlike the rest of the world, instead of just bitching about it when they have something wrong on one of their myths, we go ahead and try to replicate the results and show them what they did wrong. We're here to show you what we thought should have been done differently with the ping pong ball bazooka. So the first thing we're gonna do is replicate the original experiment. Four foot ping pong ball barrel, vacuum pump, tape on the ends, ping pong ball for ammo, and it fires off just great. But then we had to replicate the problem the Mythbusters had. Enter a 10 foot barrel. Same as before, only a bit longer. Vacuum connection, gauge on the breech end where you load the ball, tape on the muzzle end where it comes flying out. Go ahead, pump it down, let her rip. About half the time we fired this cannon, the ball would not even come out the far end. This was the problem the Mythbusters were seeing, where air was getting past the ball and actually acting as a brake before it broke out the end of the barrel. So we came up with a solution for that. And we thought the Mythbusters did. Because during the episode, they talked about adding a choke to their cannon. Now, when I think of choke, I think of a choke on a shotgun, which fits on the muzzle. What they built was an adapter that went on the breech end and connected it to an air cannon. They called that a choke. Technically, it fits the definition of a choke, but that's not what it needed. I think it needed a choke on the muzzle. Enter the Milwaukee Makerspace muzzle modification. The hmm. This is what we think they should have done to fix that little problem. So we have to first of all show you what this is. This is the Milwaukee Makerspace muzzle modification. And to do that, we've hired a high-end graphics department, much like Mythbusters does. So the idea behind the Milwaukee Makerspace muzzle modification is to put a vacuum chamber on the muzzle of the barrel to suck away all the extra air that winds up in front of the ping pong ball. So as you can see from this high-tech computer animation, as the ball comes down the barrel, all of the air in front of it gets sucked into this vacuum chamber away from the ball, letting the ball clear the barrel. He's our high-end graphics department. So Tom, you say, where's your high-speed camera? Well, it's in the shop. Or we don't own a $100,000 high-speed camera. I'm not sure which. So to measure the speed of our barrel, we took a chronograph. Simple system, has two light beams that get crossed and you time how long the ball passes between them. And for those of you that are saying, oh, well, over that much distance, your ball will go too much slower, we did the calculations, it's gonna only lose about 30 to 40 feet per second. So here's the cool graphic we've made to show our results. First of all, the four foot barrel, 267 feet per second, that works out to 182 miles an hour. The raw 10-foot barrel came in at, lower, at a lower speed at 239 feet per second and 162 miles an hour. Then the Milwaukee Makerspace muzzle modification came in at a roaring 639 feet per second. That's over 435 miles an hour. So these are the results and this is why we think the Mythbusters need to revisit this myth. So we all know how the Mythbusters like to repeat the results, preferably big and boom and loud. Milwaukee Makerspace, we don't do that. We just like to make a left turn. So what we're going to do is take our 10 foot long Milwaukee Makerspace muzzle modified ping pong ball bazooka and add a silencer. So we're going to have the only 154 bore 10 foot long ping pong ball bazooka silenced for sniper use. You think we're full of shit? Come on down to Maker Fair Milwaukee, September 27th and 28th. We'll have the bazookas there and we'll be firing them.